Yo, check this out. This may snow us and young. It's me, a bad boy. I'm young, I'm pretty, I hit hard. I'm in the best shape of my life. Don't nobody want to challenge me right now. So when you think of Mace, you think of Harlem World, think it's not a game. Harlem World, double up. So, I know you're on the bad boy tour. And it's been incredible. The write-ups have just been so incredible about it. Why do you think that bad boys had so much popularity with everybody? Because we just have a superstar cast and everybody come out and get their best. Okay. And nobody acts stuck up. Mm-hmm. And we style by Groovy Lou. All right, all right. Now, you know, everybody loves Bad Boy, but, you know, there are a lot of girls out there that like you, too. So why do you think that the ladies are, like, really feeling me? I don't know. I guess my voice. I just talk real slow. In the 1990s, Mace and Diddy were one of hip-hop's famous duos. Diddy was a famous producer and label owner, while Mace was a 19-year-old babyface prodigy from Harlem. Back with Puffy Combs and with Mace, and you guys, you bet the hottest guy's going today. How must that feel at 26 and 19 years old? I mean, we feel blessed. We, you know, thank God for everything. We constantly pray and know that he's responsible for everything that, that, that has been blessed and granted to, to us. That's what we try to tell young kids, that it's important to have God in your life. And, I have to agree with you yeah. on that one. This was the period when he was known as Puff Daddy, and he and Mace were perhaps the smoothest duo in hip-hop at the time. They wore the same flashy outfit in their videos, and they were like Batman and Robin. But if we take a peek into the future and fast forward to 2024, this is what Mace and Diddy think of each other. Let's go. Yo, how did this nigga tell me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. Mm. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. Mm. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. Mm. You're not signing, nigga, because I ain't need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, nigga. You know who to play with, nigga. I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album, and then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people, and then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the God's name? Mace and Diddy's story began in the late 90s. Before Mace met Diddy and joined Bad Boy, he was just a young dude from the streets of Harlem. He and his cousin Cameron, who was known as Killer Cam at the time, were part of the group known as Children of the Corn. Other rappers in the group were Bloodshed, McGruff, and the legendary Big L. During this period, his stage name was actually Murder Mace. But Murder Mace's career came to an end in 1996. Mace's twin sister, Stacen, introduced him to Kuda Love, who was Biggie's road manager. Kuda Love took Mace to a rap convention in Atlanta that Puff Daddy and Jermaine Dupri were also attending. Mace got one chance to freestyle for Diddy at the Hard Rock Cafe, and he wasn't going to let his opportunity slip. By the time Mace was done freestyling, Diddy had decided to give him a contract and sign him to Bad Boy Records. And this is when the Mace and Diddy bromance began. Puff was like the first person I ever met that see things the same exact way. Like a lot of people look at me like, he's overdoing it, he worked too hard, or he want things too perfect. I just want, to me, perfect is the right way. And I don't settle for nothing. And I, it was just amazing to meet somebody else that don't settle like that. Murder May signed a $250,000 contract and he was given 50 grand as an advance. Bad Boy Records also changed his name from Murder Mace to just Mace to make him more marketable. And Mace had everything going for him. He was the ladies' man. He had the looks, the charm and smile with dimples, the charisma, and he was a pretty dope rapper. When I was growing up, I was like the, the good-hearted kid. I had my little devilish ways, but my mother used to always tell me my smile get me out of everything and my eyes always look like I'm innocent, so I got away with a lot of things. No matter who I'm communicating with, as long as I smile, I get away with it. Alongside changing his name, Bad Boy Records also changed the theme of Mace's music and his image. 
Mace went from telling gritty street stories and doing hardcore rap to doing radio-friendly music and themes that sell to a larger audience. Mace also dumped the baggy pants and the gangster looks he had with Children of the Corn for the flashy pants, luxury fashion, and quirky dances he and Puff Daddy did in their videos. He became Diddy's right-hand man, the Robin to his Batman, and they even wore matching outfits. Mace and Diddy did a number of records together. One of the first songs Mace worked on for Diddy was the hit track, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. Let's tell me what time we gonna link up, man. We should be over here in a minute. Around 12 o'clock. Why, why are you in the conversation? Now with Sean on the hot track, melt like this hot wax, put it out, all the stores, bet you can shop that. Leave a nigga with a hot hat, frontin' like bad boy ain't got tracks. Nigga, stop that. There's no guy slicker than Can't Nobody Hold Me Down hit number one on Billboard Hot 100 and remained number one for 12 weeks. And the song also went two times platinum. So Mace definitely was now a certified star. Mace also wrote the majority of the material used for Diddy's Puff Daddy and the Family No Way Out album. He was the next big thing to come from Bad Boy and everyone knew it. And after Biggie Smalls was killed in March 1997, Mace was the guy everyone expected to be the new face of the label. The spotlight was now on him and even Mace admitted that this put him under some pressure. Mace was then featured on Biggie's second posthumous single, Mo Money, Mo Problems. You know, I had a lot of love for the late, great, notorious B.I.G., but I knew Biggie had had one style, and I wanted to contribute a new style that could take Bad Boy to another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put him up, put him up, come on. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. Damn, who's hot, who's not? Tell me who's hot, who's tell out the story? Tell me who flopped, who caught the blue drop, who you? Mace had now generated enough buzz for his name, and it was time to release his debut album. His debut studio album, Harlem World, was released in October 1997. The album was entitled Harlem World. Cause everybody that died for the cause in Harlem and suffered a whole lot for Harlem, they just mean the world to me and I wanted everybody to know that, even to the smallest people on the map that did anything to help Harlem or help any person coming up, mean the world to me. So I wanted to include the world and connect it with my little world called Harlem and just united as one big family, Harlem World. Harlem World debuted at number one on a Billboard 200 and sold 273,000 copies in its first week. And the album has since gone four times platinum. Mace's debut album was even nominated for Best Rap Album at the Grammys. Mace then began his own label called All Out Records. He signed his group called Harlem World as the first acts of the label. Harlem World was Mace's way of helping his friends succeed and carrying them along with him. Members of the group were Blinky Blink, Cardin, Huddy, Sugar J. Mino, Loon, and Mace's twin sister, Baby Stace. Harlem World then released their album called The Movement in March 1999. The album has since been certified gold, which tells you Mace was at the peak of his powers. A few months after, Mace was gearing to release his second studio album titled Double Up. And while doing promo runs for the album, Mace did an interview with Funkmaster Flex on Hot 97. It was during this interview that Mace dropped a bombshell that shocked the whole world. I got my man Mace on the phone. What's up, baby? I'm chilling, Flex. I feel mad good. I got a, let, um, a fax today from Magic Johnson Music. It says Mace is retiring from the rap game. I gotta do what make me happy. You know, a lot of people gonna say I'm crazy. I'm leaving money behind and a lot of things. But it's just, you know, how I feel in my heart. Once God puts something in your heart, you know, God talks to everybody different. So you saying you don't want to make any more albums? I don't want to make no records. I don't want to rap on no records. And I don't want to run no record companies. I don't think people want that, Mace. You might be outvoted. What you gonna do? <laughs> if I'm outvoted, then I'm just outvoted. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel as though, like, you know, like the late, great Tupac and people like Biggie, they got the same messages. They just didn't act on it. Mm -hmm. So when
when you look at it in that realm, it's like, whoa. I appreciate you calling, Big Daddy. You mind it? I pre- Mace announced to the whole world on radio that he was retiring from rap and he was going to become a pastor. He had just released two albums and he was one of the fastest rising stars in hip hop. He was so successful and that's why this decision caught everyone off guard. Mace was now known as Pastor Mason. And before announcing to the world, Mace stated that the first person he told that he wanted to be a pastor was Diddy. Now, do you remember, like, who was the first person you told, like, I'm done with this? I think um, Puff was the first person I told. And what was his what reaction? Did Puff say? I mean, he was actually real supportive. I thought he would be the opposite, but mm-hmm. he was like, if God told you to do that, you really need to do that. Definitely. Wow. All right. Supportive. That's what it's supposed to be like. Well, what- Have you spoken to Puff lately? Do y'all talk or what? Well, actually, we not we not really on speaking terms, mm-hmm. but, you know, I still pray for the dude, and okay. I pray that all is well with him. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pete Diddy's supposed to be releasing a gospel album. What, what came to your mind when you, when you, when you, when you heard that? What, what, what thoughts did you have? Y'all want me to answer that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, can RuPaul put out a gospel album? But don't you think that everybody can express themselves? Definitely. And it, if he, I he mean, they himself? can. You ask me, I'm just okay. answering how you... But it was also after Mace became a pastor that his beef with Diddy began. Mace and Diddy began going back and forth with Brother Love, calling Mace a fake pastor, while Mace called Diddy a thief and stated that Diddy was only slandering his name. Oh, how dare this nigga tell me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. Mm. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. Mm. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork. So they- Mace accused Diddy of stealing from his artists by not paying them what they deserve. Although Mace's debut album went multi-platinum and he also wrote several hits for Diddy, he stated that he only earned peanuts for his efforts. Mace explained that every artist on Bad Boy Records, including Biggie, was robbed by the label and never paid the amount they deserved. Right here, like, like he didn't want me to grow at anything. And, and to anybody, is that gonna bother you? Yeah. Especially if I'm producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party, and I would be in the studio writing the records, and then I'd just come back and say, he'd say, this is his part, or ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. So that became really frustrating for me, because I'm looking- You said you don't think you like that, what that mean? I don't think you would like that. Like- If a motherfucker (laughs) did you like that, what the fuck? Diddy denied that he ever stole from any artist. Instead, he asked any artist to come forward with proof that he had robbed them. Diddy stated that Mace is a fake pastor and con artist. Diddy stated that rather than he owing Mace any money, Mace is the one who owes him $3 million. Because people have this thing called the, the tap out button. When you get to a certain point and the money is running low, you wanna you gotta run this hustle to try to find somebody to blame. Fight for your reputation. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fight for my reputation. I'm gonna fight for the honorable man I am, the righteous king that I am. I'm not perfect, you know what I'm saying? There could have been an accountant mess up on this. We did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album, and then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people, and then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the... However, according to Mace, the only reason why the other artists aren't demanding their money is because most of them have been silenced by NDAs, while others like Biggie, Craig Mack, or Black Rob have either been murdered or unfortunately already passed away. Let's go. Yo, how dare this nigga tell me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? 
Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. You're not signing, nigga. Because I ain't need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, nigga. You know who to play with, nigga. What May said about bad boy artists dying brings about the conversation of the Puff Daddy curse. Just like with Bad Boy Records, almost everyone who started Uptown Records with Diddy have also passed away. I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy, and Kim, was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's big? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he? Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning is gone. Another major reason why Mace and Diddy no longer get along is because back in the 90s, Diddy acquired the rights to his publishing for $20,000. Mace now offered Diddy $2 million for the same publishing rights. But Brother Love told Mace that he has to match the offer of a European guy who is willing to pay more before he can obtain his publishing. Mace also continued to diss Diddy every time he gets on stage, and this beef doesn't look like it's coming to an end anytime soon. Uh, niggas love to star the artists, but they love to play the freaks. Love to play the freaks. Don't ever put Mace with other bad boys who have hardships. You know, I get it jumping like a boss pit, nigga. I'm the first level, dirt level. I can never work level. Niggas mad I made it to the I would never work level. Since Kane killed Abel, I'm able to kill Kane. And love don't steal, my nigga. Change your name. And I see no integrity in your name. And I'm haunted by the ghost of St. James. Champagne King. Match my rolling plain James. I'm the ghost of Wolf. Ghost of Rizzo, come with the facts you never considered. I'm the ghost of shine. I speak for every artist never spoke their mind, representing every artist that was left behind. Uh -huh. From Craig Mack to G Dub, I still remember them kids chanting for every producer you ever stole a cent. Uh -huh. Why you playing with? Mace came close to ending his bad boy contract and joining G Unit in 2005. 50 Cent wanted to sign Mace. However, Diddy wanted $2 million to release Mace from his contract, but 50 didn't think it was worth that much, so Mace was unable to sign with G-Unit. But in 2009, Mace pulled up on Diddy while he was at an Atlanta radio station. Mace had some papers with him that would allow him to leave Bad Boy Records if Diddy signed them. Diddy signed the papers, but it turned out that Mace was only free from Bad Boy Records for a year. The signed documents only freed him from his contract for 12 months. Fortunately for Mace, he eventually left Bad Boy in 2012, and these days it seems Mace is signed to Death World Records. However, this doesn't mean he and Diddy have stopped beefing. But luckily for Mace, he is now out of the contract he felt enslaved to.